we still don't fully understand what causes IBS, but we know that multiple factors are often at play. I'm going to briefly explain the key ones. Food poisoning, gastroenteritis. You may have heard of the term post-infective IBS. It's a distinctive type of IBS where people develop it after a bout of food poisoning or gut infection like traveler's diarrhea. Ingesting food or drink containing harmful bacteria, viruses or parasites will cause your stomach or intestines to inflame and although um, the majority of people will eventually recover from this. Approximately one third will go on to develop IBS even once the infection has gone. Genetics. I often hear my clients say that because their mom or dad has IBS, they are destined to suffer with it too. This is luckily not entirely true. Even if you have the IBS gene, they can be switched on or off depending on certain lifestyle and environmental factors. These can be stress levels, diet, sleep, lots of different things. So even if IBS is common in your family, it doesn't necessarily mean that you are destined to suffer with it too. However, if you are constantly sleep deprived, stressed and not able to eat well, the chances are that your IBS genes will turn on. Being female. IBS is twice as common in us women than men. And in fact, some studies say that for every five females with IBS, you only have two men. If you'd like to learn more about this, check out my video called Women and IBS. Psychological factors. Many of us would be surprised to know that often people with IBS report what we call early life adverse events. These can range from emotional stress at a young age to physical or even sexual abuse. Research suggests that going through significant stress in childhood has, uh, has a long lasting impact on how people deal with stress um, or adverse situations later on in life. Specifically, if you experience trauma or abuse in childhood and have IBS, you will find it more difficult to recover from an IBS flare-up than a person with IBS who did not suffer in that way as a child. This seems to be linked with the changes in the HPA axis, which in simple terms means how your body is responding to stress. Sleep. Having trouble with sleeping can contribute to the development of IBS and also make the symptoms worse when you already have it. About 7 out of 10 of people with IBS have sleep issues and sleep issues have been shown to affect both the gut symptoms and also things like back pain, headaches and other non-gut problems. Food. A lot of people think that dietary intolerances are solely responsible for causing IBS. But although certain food and drink can trigger your symptoms, diet is not something that is considered to be the cause of IBS. The bottom line is that there is no single cause for your IBS, just a number of things that increase your chances of developing it. Some of these factors, if left unchanged, could act as triggers. Things we talked about earlier, um, recurrent gut infections, poor sleep, ongoing trauma, and stress or chronic anxiety. But perhaps what is more important than focusing on what could have caused it is understanding that your IBS is a disorder, a condition in which your gut and your brain are not communicating very well. Bearing this in mind, you can adopt an approach to manage your symptoms and the root cause. I explain this in more detail in my video called IBS, is it all in your head?